By now, you've probably heard that ketamine, one of my very favorite drugs, was implicated in Matthew Perry's death. And I'm sure it's going to go through the cycles just like Propofol did with Michael Jackson about people being irrationally afraid of it. And so I want to get ahead of it and talk about why it is one of my very favorite anesthetic drugs, why it's basically irreplaceable, and why it is incredibly safe and useful in delivering deep intravenous sedation in particular. So first, ketamine was delivered, actually developed in the 1960s, and it is a unique drug. It's the only non-inhaled gas. It's the only anesthetic that is a complete anesthetic that can be given intravenously or orally. So it gives you uh, decreased anxiety, decreased perception of pain, it makes you sleepy, it makes you forgetful, all in one drug. Normally it takes cocktails of different drugs to get all those components of anesthesia put together. And the more drugs you have, the more drug side effects and interactions you have. So it's beautiful that ketamine can do it all as a single drug. The other wonderful thing about ketamine is it is a dissociative anesthetic. While your brain is under the influence of ketamine, the awareness part of your brain, your cortex, is almost kind of chemically disconnected. It's dissociated from the remainder of your brain and your body. <clears throat> In that state, we can do things like inject the entire surgical area with lidocaine to make it completely numb so that later on, when the top part of your brain starts waking back up, we can be operating and causing no pain and not require any narcotics at all. No intravenous fentanyl or Demerol or morphine, any of those kinds of things. So we can do narcotic-free anesthesia as a result of the dissociative power of ketamine. The third thing that I really love about ketamine is since that dissociation is there while the numbing is being put in, that's the only part of the surgery that would be hurting, would be the stinging of the initial numbing medicine going in. The brain is totally unaware of that stinging, and so it doesn't suffer while it's asleep. And a brain that suffers while it's asleep keys up your sympathetic nervous system, keys up your adrenaline, and after the surgery, you are potentiated, you are primed to feel more pain during recovery. By using ketamine before the injection, by skipping over that stage as far as your brain's aware, there is no, no susceptive windup, and patients have markedly better recoveries with no narcotics and no post-op pain. Finally, ketamine is one of the very few anesthetic that boosts your vital functions. While you're under the influence of ketamine, you breathe more deeply. You be, breathe bigger breaths more often. Your pulse rate goes up. Your blood pressure goes up. These are in direct contrast to the normal effects of sedative hypnotics and narcotics. So if the drug is so safe and so wonderful, and if I rely on it as a part of my anesthetic cocktail for literally every patient for the last thousands of patients over 10 years or so, why was it implicated in Matthew Perry's death? Well, you can just imagine if your awareness part of your brain is dissociated, is dissociated from the rest of your brain and your surroundings, and you're also sitting in a hot tub or a body of water or laying across a train track or standing on the edge of a cliff, if you're in a dangerous circumstance while the awareness part of your brain, which makes you human, is asleep and dissociated, you can become a victim of that dangerous circumstance. So this is a fantastic, phenomenal drug when it's being used in a context where you are monitored and kept safe by a medical professional. I'm briefly going to mention that ketamine has also been shown to decrease major depressive episodes. That also needs to be done in the context of a monitored situation with a medical professional. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. It's a fantastic drug. It changed my anesthetic plan for my last many thousands of patients, definitely for the better. Uh, and when it's used by a medical professional in the right context, there's no reason to be afraid of it. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so you can see my future content.